Okay, good morning. We're here today to uh, have a little bit of a, a discussion in our uh, monthly forum about hiring for attitude as opposed to skills. And to some people that may seem like a, a, a strange sort of a, uh, pathway to, to put down from a recruitment point of view, but it's one that's very pertinent in um, selecting the right people for the job. So uh, joining me this morning is, is George, Senior Field Officer for New South Wales, Louise, the General Manager of TABMA Training, Bianca, uh, TABMA Apprentice and Trainees HR Officer, and Kat, uh, TABMA Apprentice and Trainees Senior Recruitment Officer. Let's, uh, let's start by defining firstly what is a traineeship and apprenticeship in terms of the people destined for that vocation. Kat? Yeah, so an Australian apprenticeship program is basically an opportunity uh, for someone to basically gain a, a qualification and at the same time work. So they're gaining that, all those on the job skills and at the same time getting certified. Um, so it's a great way for people to not only work and earn at the same time, but also gain that qualification. And while you've got the spotlight on you, what in terms of attitude for an apprenticeship, apprentice or trainee, um, what is attitude and, and what should our host employers and members be looking for in terms of an attitude that, that suits a trainee? Sure, absolutely. And I've thought a lot about this. So what I've come um, at, to as a conclusion is that attitudes actually come in all shapes and forms. As they say, no shoe fits all. Um, we need to remember that not all youth have come from a supportive network. Um, the key is to not actually be biased on what you think will suit your company, but how a fresh face can actually shift the company into a new direction. The idea is to give people a chance, particularly youth. If people are placed in a good situation, they do tend to stick it out. If you find the culture of the workplace needs to be improved and is stuck in a rut, Unfortunately, negative environments and people can influence bad behaviour, particularly in young people. More often than not, if they're taking, um, you know, if they're taking the time to induct, onboard a young person and show them that they are welcome and supported and that they're going to be developed at a pace that suits them. Uh, you know, if they've shown up for the interview, if they're going for the process, the chances are they are interested in the job. It just comes down to sometimes the right fit for them, not just what's going to be the right fit for the company. Mm. Yeah, how true is that? Louise, you've been in the training sector, the vocational training sector for a while. Um, what's, what skills are trainable and what do you look for in the classroom in terms of the attitude of the student's when you are training? Look, the attitudes is the willingness to learn. So they're not, a lot of people that come into trades, traineeships, apprentices may not have, you know, loved school, didn't fit the academic box of school and, you know, the thought of university is not on, on, on their horizon. But if they've got the will to learn and the attitude to learn, then, you know, teaching them the skills after that is very easy. Um, it, it comes down to the, am I willing to actually have a go and learn this? Um, so vocational education is not school. It's adult, it's the adult education side. It's the ability to show us that you can do and that you can understand it. So once they show that attitude, then teaching the skills become easier. And, you know, it's learning takes time where you don't have people that walk in knowing how to do it. That's our job to teach them and train them. Mm -hmm. is, there, is every person trainable in every skill set or do you look for specific traits that go, oh, this person would be perfect for this skill set? Yeah, not everyone's trainable in every skill set. It also depends on, you know, all our minds work differently. So you've got some youth um, people that are more um, IT savvy, computer savvy. So, you know, putting them into, you know, product um, timber system design type courses where they're using the computer software and got that natural ability to navigate where others are better, you know, on the tools. Um, than on a computer. So it, it all depends on, you know, where their natural self like to sit as well and what, what they've grown. You know, you've got kids that, you know, play all those computer games 
So, you know, naturally, you know, they're very IT savvy. Then, you know, you may have kids that walked away from the computer and like to build things and, and you know, in the backyard or in the garage and in, in the shed. So it depends on, you know, where, where that where their background comes from leads into what they're generally better at. We'll come back to that in terms of uh, um, how do you assess that attitude and how do you then put that in the right direction from a recruitment point of view. But let's just look at the the the, the side of the coin in terms of um, someone employing somebody who does not have the correct attitude or the appropriate attitude for that workplace and the vocation that they've been put into. George, you've been a field officer for, for some years now and looked after a lot of apprentices and trainees. What have you seen happen within a workplace when the wrong person with the inappropriate attitude has been placed there? Um, okay, so, you know, when we do come across a... Uh an apprentice or a trainee with the you know the wrong attitude to the to the job, you, you might have to sit down with them and it's you know you might ask them why they why they've got that attitude, what they're not enjoying about the job, and maybe explain to them you know the the processes of the job and the requirements and the outcomes that they'll get if you know if they commit to that job if, if they change their attitude if they become a good team member, um, they'll be they'll fit in quite well and they they'll be respected by the their colleagues and their and their supervisors. Mm-hmm. If those discussions don't work out, George, what what tends to occur? Um, it, look, if the attitude does continue, and it has happened in the past, that you know the the apprentice or trainee could lose their position, it, they could actually forfeit their whole career. Um, you know, we we would look at maybe other options for them. But um, someone with a very negative attitude is just not going to work in their in their apprenticeship or traineeship, and um, it could be a whole cancellation. It could be a whole waste of their their time and our time. Bianca, you're uh, our uh, HR officer in Tabma Apprentices and Trainees. You started as a trainee, as we all know. We've uh, certainly talked about that a lot in uh, different interviews and forums. You were hired um, essentially because of your attitude not because of the skills that you necessarily brought to the job, because you were inexperienced. You had never recruited before. You'd never been yeah. in HR before. Um, where did that attitude come from? Um, as much as I don't want to admit it, I think it's a school that I went to. Um, they had a very high standard of, you know, work that they want to submit um, and things like that, as well as coming from, um, you know, a retail background. While it's not direct relevant experience, I dealt with a lot of people every day um, and, you know, I've been working for for quite a few years before I started here, so uh, I think a combination of, of those two things. So my school disciplined me well, um, and I've developed some useful transferable skills in my prior roles that I can put into um, put into use in this job. And I was I was quite excited to get myself started into another career that wasn't um, university related. So I think that's kind of um, where that comes into play. Within your your placement directly with with Tabma, what contributed to you maintaining? That, uh, that attitude you came with um, to su- successfully complete your traineeship in, uh, in, in quite a period of time, less than, the, than what we thought would take you? I think having a, having a supportive team, you know, even though I did start for the first three months at home, I did have the support of both you and Kat and George and just everybody else in the team to help me um, along the way where I needed help. You know, um, like I said, we started in lockdown, so it could have been a very negative um, environment, but it was very positive. You guys are very supportive. So um, that does um, did play a lot into that. So, yeah. Was there specific things that as an employer we did that helped you along that way, Bianca? I think giving you know me dedicated time to be able to do my assessments and do my actual learning um, that I could you know disconnect myself from the team and my work for a little bit and focus on that rather than try to manage both things at once or you know do it outside of work hours. So giving me that dedicated time and support to to do that aspect of well definitely did did help a lot. Kat, when you're recruiting, um, how do you assess attitude? It's a difficult one. Um, obviously, you get young people who are shy and others are very confident. Ne- like, you know, neither of them is right or wrong. Um, we understand there are so many different personalities out there. And we also need to understand that some people have come from backgrounds um, where they have felt quite, you know, like they can't speak up and things like that. Um, they may have been yelled at as as two children and all that stuff. So they're actually quite timid and scared to actually speak what they want to say really um so 
Honestly, the best way to assess attitude is to give them a go. You can assess it on the job once they start. And that's the honest truth. You get ones that are, you know, say all the right things in the interview, but then once they're on the job, it turns out that actually they're not the right fit. Um, and you get the ones who are so quiet and so timid and just or just kind of seem like they're not all, you know, they're not listening, um, but then they're on the job and they're an absolute gun. So you just need to keep an open mind of what is good attitude. Louise, you've managed large companies uh, like I have. How long do you give that uh, attitude assessment stage? Well, during the recruitment process, it's really difficult, I, I believe, to really ensure that you picking up what the attitude is because people mask a lot. Um, and then even in, in into employment, you've got, you know, your three, six month probationary periods. And generally it would, in my experience, about the fourth month, fourth month of employment is actually when you see the real personality of a person. Um, there's a lot of still learning and masking and, you know, watching your behaviour, but by about the 16th week, people relax into it. So you get to see people's true selves, their natural being. So, yeah. you know, that's why probation is important, but it's also important for um, us as a training organisation to work with them to show them the benefits of the education side of it. And, you know, George and the, the field team and your guys, you know, everyone to, you know, be that support also and just that, that mentor and that sounding board, because it's also in a period of un uncertainty for them as well. New environment, working full time. So, you know, attitudes attitudes can adjust a bit during that time if, if the support's right. George, is the outcome better when you hire attitude and train skills? I mean, all attitudes can be ch changed. You know, if, if, you, if the kids say, if you, if you explain to them, you know, the goals and the outcomes, uh, the attitude will will get better. Um, you, you, you know, you, you buddy them up with someone that's uh, a good worker, that's got a good attitude, and, and that, that will flow across to that person, I feel. Pat, any closing remarks on, on that uh, question? More often than not, businesses do tend to focus on hard skills, which are all the technical learnings that they've been able to gain over time. What we don't tend to focus on is the qualities and attributes of candidates. And these are often called soft skills. However, they're actually the most important skills um, or what I like to call strong skills. Um, so look, hard skills can be taught over time with patience. Everyone can pick up certain hard skills. And as Louise said, you know, based on interest, um, you know, you can actually transfer that over to actual um, hard skills. Um, personality traits are often ingrained to us at a really early age and so they're much harder to shift however in the right environment with the right support as George said um, they can change if you give someone a chance if you nurture them in the workplace and show them you know a, a pathway they can go down that's a really positive experience then they may just change as a person. They will gain the confidence. They will feel like there are people out there who actually care about them and want them to succeed. And that is really, really important, particularly with youth. Everybody, thank you very much for your input on this month's forum. 